part c, use the quadratic formula to find the zeros of f exactly. Okay, so no calculator. Um, the zeros are going to be here and here, so it can already estimate it to be negative one and a half um, and about three and a half. Um, so I'm going to have to use the equation we found for this parabola in part b and set it equal to zero and then solve. So the equation we had before looked like negative one-third x minus two. I'm just going to, so I want to set that equal to zero because I want to find the zeros and start solving. Let me zoom in. So this one, this one should be pretty easy. Subtract two, so that leaves me with negative one-third x minus one squared equals negative two. Then the next thing I want to get rid of is this negative one-third. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to multiply by the reciprocal, negative three over one. That would get rid of it. So then I have x minus one squared equals negative times negative is a positive six. Then you need to get rid of this square by taking the square root. Gets rid of that. So then x minus one equals square root of six. This is not a perfect square, so I'm just going to leave it square root of six. Then add one. So answers are square root of six plus one, but that's only one answer. I had forgotten up here when you take the square root, so I had six and I took the square root, it's actually going to be plus or minus. So this is going to be plus or minus square root of six plus one. If you're confused as to what the two answers would be, the two answers would be one of them would be x equals positive square root six plus one, and the other answer would be negative square root of six, also plus one. So those are the two answers. Okay, so you're not supposed to have a calculator, but I'm still going to show you. If I do square root of six plus one, that'll give me three point four, four, nine. And then if I do the same thing, except throw in a negative, it'll give me negative 1.449, which is very, very close to what I wanted.